Parlem amb una de les personalitats que ha acudit a aquest fòrum sobre el medi ambient. Es tracta d'Herbert Girardet. Herbert, welcome. Thank you very much for coming to visit us. Herbert is a top urban ecologist, worldwide leader, UN Global 500 Award regarded as the Nobel Prize in Environment, author of 50 documentaries and 12 educational books. He promotes the change to regenerative cities, founder and former director of the World Future Council programs. Well, Herbert, we, we should talk about the concept of uh, sustainability. Yeah. Uh, efficient cities, sustainable cities, green cities, eco cities, more cities, too many words <laughs> for yeah. uh, talking about one subject. It's yeah. uh, sustainability. Um, we are changing the words, but this is something that reminds in all of us of something that we need to do, we, yeah. we need to accomplish, but it, it looks like it never happened <laughs> in yeah. 100%. Yeah. Why? Well, the concept of sustainable development was originated in the late 80s by the Brundtland Commission. And basically, at that time, the world's developing countries were, uh, and, and developed countries are wrestling with a future concept for how humanity should conduct itself on this planet. So the idea was also at that time, it was clear we live on a finite planet. We cannot have infinite growth. Uh, in the use of resources in our economies and so on. So how can we have a sustainable world where at the same time we have urban growth, economic growth, uh, ever greater use of resources, which is currently the case. So certainly that has been the challenge now for humanity for particularly since the Rio summit in 1992. But unfortunately, in my view, the term sustainability has been we used by too many people in too many different ways. I mean, when a company like Shell or BP says they want to have sustainable profits, I ask myself the question, how much meaning does this word still have? The other concern that I have is this. Uh, we have not sustained the world's mm -hmm. environments in, the, in, in this period of time over the last 30 or so years. We have run it down. So in my view, it is time to think beyond sustainability and start thinking about regenerative development. Unless we are serious mm -hmm. about a future for people on this planet, we better make sure that we have to regenerate the ecosystems, the atmosphere that we have, uh, that we depend on in our daily lives. So certainly it is a question of restoring the health of soils, restoring the health of forests around the planet, and all of that needs to relate to the way we conduct ourselves in our cities. Mm -hmm. This is an urbanizing world, with nearly half the world's people, in fact, exactly half the world's people now living in cities. In Europe, it's 75 or 80 percent. So the future of the world depends on whether or not cities become uh, resource efficient, become regenerative in terms of their relationship to the world's environment. Mm -hmm. What's the best medicine uh, for you? That's uh, just to, I don't know, to say a message saying uh, we need to stop growing or maybe to create new rules for the growing. Yeah. Um, if uh, the message has to be the second one, which kind of rules? Uh, and particularly when most of the governments all over the world, they don't listen to the, this message. Well, there are more and more people listening uh, to this message. And I think this year in December, uh, there will be another conference on climate change, and, uh, you know, the most important one so far. So certainly there is a consensus building that humanity has to find different ways of conducting itself. Mm -hmm. The critical issue is not so much what governments do, but what companies do, because the world is really run by companies much more than by governments at this moment in time. And, you know, but both governments and companies are saying that it is inevitable for us to have more growth. You know, that is also directly related to our financial systems. Mon money is borrowed, has to be repaid with interest, and therefore growth is a systemic aspect of the way we currently run our both financial and economic systems, and the urban systems that are part of that. So I think certainly more and more academics, more and more decision makers, particularly at the, at the UN level, realize that the status quo cannot continue. 
We have good news in the, in the area of renewable energy. We have good news in the area of organic farming around the mm -hmm. planet. Mm -hmm. We have good news in some parts of the world. We have reforestation initiatives to help revive damaged forest ecosystems, particularly in countries like China. So there are positive things happening in, in various places. The question is whether the systems under which we operate, the intellectual, the financial, the economic systems, are willing to adapt to this need for a, 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 you know, a, a stable situation on this planet. And so far, uh, the, the, the aspects that we mm -hmm. see are not, not positive uh, as a whole. There is a new interesting word, uh, which is the um, circular economy. Yeah. Uh, which role should the circular economy take? Well, in, I've done a lot of work on, I, I call it circular economy, also call it circular metabolism. Mm -hmm. We have taken for granted up to now that we take resources from nature and dump waste somewhere else in nature. And that certainly is not the way nature itself works. Nature, nature works as a circular system. All mm -hmm. wastes that, produced, that are produced in nature end up as feeding new growth for the future. Whereas we do the opposite. So circular economy is kind of conceptualized in this general context that ultimately humanity cannot continue with linear systems of production and consumption. And so certainly there is a great deal of work going on, particularly at the level of the city. Mm -hmm. and there we need to differentiate between the organic waste products that we produce in our cities. And this, there's good news on that. There's a lot of cities now really turning that organic waste back into compost back into the soil and mm -hmm. so you know the circular organic waste economy is really on its way in many cities the bigger problem however is the technical waste that we produce mm -hmm. and there's certainly quite a bit happening there too particularly with separation technologies and the waste stream where you can assure that all different wastes glass plastics metals and so on end up in different streams and then can more easily be recycled but by and large it's a major uphill task, particularly because people think it's too expensive to disentangle all these wastes and then turn them into new products. Mm -hmm. So one thing is that, is that is happening now is that we turn our plastic waste into big bales and then send them over to China, and then somehow something happens over there. But that's no longer good enough. I think we need to do it at the local level. We need to create, and this is the positive opportunity that we have. We can and we need to create new economies from technical waste recycling. And that is certainly much more to do with how cities operate and how we can incorporate the uh, waste the, or technical waste products of our cities into new technical uh, products uh, that uh, help to create jobs at the local level. We used to talk about China as a bad example of, yeah. uh, you know, bad things, yeah, yeah, talking yeah, about sustainability. Yeah. But uh, we should talk also about Africa, South America, other yeah. countries, even first first countries in this world. Yeah. No? Yeah. And um, well, just coming back to the to the world, you, you mentioned the technology. How must the technology be incorporated on the regenerative cities? Which is the role? Uh, so we are in front of an amazing development of smart solutions. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Well, I think it is becoming clear that we are much more, much better informed about the impacts of our, act, our actions at, as humanity today. Smart technology provide feedback loops that give us information on how we, how, we, how we behave ourselves in terms of our impacts on the environment. So that is good news. We are no longer able to close our eyes and stick our heads in the sand and pretend these problematic issues are not happening. So smart technologies and uh, approach, uh, approaches like resilience are all there to help cities find ways of operating differently. The question is now how we can translate all of that into new approaches to the economy of cities, because in the end, unless these developments benefit the economy of our cities, the decision makers are not going to be that interested. Ecology is too far out there for, for most people and for most decision makers. So it's got to be beneficial to companies and to policy makers and the general public. And that is the challenge that we face now. So we are seeing a lot of developments being driven in part by local initiatives, but increasingly also by 
uh, nationwide or European-wide policies. Mm -hmm. For instance, waste management. You cannot ask Barcelona to change the way it operates with its waste without there being financial incentives to do this. And at the European level, we now have legislation uh, on, on land, uh, landfill taxes, for instance, which insists that every year the proportion of waste recycled has to go up. So this is national and European-wide policy, or even UN-generated policies. So the more we can get cities to get together and demand of their national governments of the European Union new policies that enable them to act differently at the local level, the better. I think that's a critical step in the right direction that we need to initiate. Do you believe the consciousness of, uh, about these issues are growing in, 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 in a small term, talk, when we talk about cities, more than the governments, more than the states. Yeah. You know, the cities are more conscious about the, the problem, uh, how, to, how to face the sustain, sustainability. Well, in the end, of course, it's all about democracy as well. I mean, unless the general public buy into these ideas, we're not going to get there. So that certainly is of critical importance, and particularly young people asking, what future do we have if the current status quo continues? So we are certainly seeing in Britain, for instance, we are suddenly seeing mm -hmm. a massive growth in the uh, membership of, of, of the Green Party, a very extraordinary phenomenon. Across Europe, we have green politics, very influential, and often coalition governments at national or, or regional level uh, are part, you know, have, have, a, have a Green Party um, active participation. In Britain, we don't have that for the moment for various reasons, but suddenly we are seeing this surge in interest about how we impact on the future and how not only the, in negative terms, the, the negative impacts will ultimately have to be paid for by future generations, but positively how green economy and circular economy can actually uh, create new jobs for young people. So there's mm -hmm. a great deal of research at university level, at, at school level, more information about uh, uh, environmental impacts and how we can find ways of creating new types of economies that comply with the uh, requirement to maintain the world's ecosystems and the world's atmosphere in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a condition that mm -hmm. allows life to continue. Herbert, a uh, last question. Uh, four years ago, you wrote the report, Ge Regenerative Cities for the World Future Council. Yeah. What have changed ever since? Well, um, this concept of urban, re urban you know, re regenerative cities is really catching on in a major way. I've just written a new book on this topic based on the report I did four years ago called Creating Regenerative Cities, which is, uh, was published last autumn. And the fact is that the idea of cities being positive in terms of their environmental impacts reduced impacts and regeneration of ecosystems linked to urban consumption pattern is becoming very significant as a topic at the United Nations level. Mm -hmm. uh, we will next year have another major UN conference uh, on, on, on the future of cities and these ideas that we can't just think about cities in terms of their urban footprint but that we need to think about cities in terms of their ecological global footprint this mm -hmm. is certainly now becoming mainstream rather than a sort of strange idea. The World Future Council is concerned above all else about the rights of future generations to a good life, that we do not leave legacies, financial and other legacies, environmental legacies, to future generations that ultimately they have to bear, bear the burden of. So all of these ideas, without a doubt, are becoming mainstream. The main question is whether we can get governments, companies, the financial system, to respond in ways that is adequate to the challenge. To you, in your opinion, there are so many cities that you can mention as a good example for working in the sustainability today. Yeah. There are many? Uh, the, yeah, I mean, in, in this book that I've just written, I've, I've listed a number of leaders in this field. Uh, I think I, I worked in Adelaide, Australia, uh, ten years ago, I was a thinker in residence to be asked to rethink mm -hmm. an urban region from a sustainability or regenerative development perspective. The good news is that the 32 strategies that I proposed have all been implemented and really had a transformative effect on that city. 
Uh, another very important example is, uh, is uh, uh, Scandinavian cities like Copenhagen, for instance. Uh -huh. Copenhagen was European green capital last year, and it deserved this uh, accolade because it really has done everything from pedestrianization, cycling, public transport, renewable energy, energy efficiency, combined heat and power, uh, uh, all the attributes of a sustainable or regenerative cities have been implemented there. I think Barcelona it's also has very major opportunities. It starts as a city that is very compact, which is very, very good mm -hmm. for walking and for cycling. And I hear that also policies on regeneration of uh, farmland from organic waste, uh, you know, input uh, or, and generally recycling uh, is, are very significant already. The important thing now is to Barcelona to go serious, get serious about renewable energy as well. You are surrounded by countryside that mm -hmm. is ideal for wind power, for solar power. That is, I think, the next important step to take. Let's do it. Uh, let's see if we'll do it better in the future. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thank Herbert. Thanks. Thank you very much.